Hey guys, have you ever wondered what is the best order to do the rides here at Universal Studios? Well, I know you have. So, that's what we're going to explore today and we're going to start right now. But before we begin, we publish theme park videos on this channel all the time. So hit that subscribe button and that bell notification button so you'll know when another video is ready for you to view. You know how I know about this? How I know you guys want to know the best order to do these rides? Well, when you fill out a request for my welcome letter, there's a spot in there that you can request a video. And this is like the most requested a video that I get through that welcome pack, which by the way, there are links in below if you want a welcome pack. Um, but today we are finally going to explore one of the strategies I like when attacking the rides at this park. Now the key to any ride strategy at Universal or any theme park really is to get into the park as soon as it opens or that it is available to you. For example, today I do have a pass that allows for early park admission. The other ways you can have early park admission at Universal will be if you stay at any of their hotels. So that is the approach I'm going to take with today's video. Early park admission, we're going to explore the most popular rides. What can we get done before noon and what's the best way to do them? Now I realize that not everyone will have early park admission. Maybe you're staying at a Disney hotel and you're popping over to Universal for a day or two. At the end of the video, I will discuss you know, how things would change if you're going to approach it that way. But as for now, let's head into the park for early park admission and let's attack these rides in the best order that we can. And FYI guys, they do not have early park admission all the time. I actually have a calendar or a link to a calendar on my website, myricksflicks.com, that will link you to the uh, early park admission schedule. For example, May has been all Universal Studios, but sometimes uh, early park admission is over there at IOA. So the best thing to do is before you get to the park or you're planning early park admission, go check out that link to make sure you're showing up to the right park. I almost did this in a Rick's Top 6 format. Rick's Top 6 party time excellent but i didn't think this video was quite right for that format so what i did i compiled a list of the six like most popular rides based on wait times and here they are you're going to have harry potter and the escape from gringotts with an average peak time of 120 minutes then we're going to have despicable me with an average peak wait time of 100 minutes Number three on the list will be Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket, which will have an average high wait time of 75 minutes. Number four will be the Transformers with a 65 minute average peak time. Number five, we're going to go with Revenge of the Mummy. 60 minutes, you can wait for that, or more sometimes. And then number six on the list will be the Simpsons ride, which can have an average high peak time of 60 minutes. So since Gringotts has the highest average peak wait time, we're gonna make our way over there, but you know, I'm not racing today. You know, I'm still pausing, I'm meeting your know, viewers and stuff. I'm not rushing, this is not a race. This is like, I'm trying to be like a typical family of four, because sometimes you guys are gonna have to pause to take care of the kids or take a, a you know, a bathroom break or something like that. So this is gonna be like an average day, not racing through the park, but let's see what we can do with the best order of rides being from the longest wait time down to the shortest wait time. It is 8.15 in the morning. The wait for Gringotts is 15 minutes. I'm gonna go put myself in a locker just like you would, and then we're gonna hit up this ride. I am riding all the rides today. The high speed roller coaster ride with sudden and dramatic acceleration, climbing, stopping and diving. Even some in the magical community find the ride a bit challenging. Alrighty guys, so the escape from Gringotts experience took about 30 minutes. I went through the regular queue, I saw all the pre-shows and everything like that. 20 minutes to get in the seat, but then for the ride and then get everything out of the locker, another 10 minutes. So I got out of there at 8.45, so I hustled over here too. Oh, actually, I'm on my way to Despicable Me. I've got like five minutes. I need to hop in the line. It's about a 20 minute standby right now because um, they are just about getting ready to release the masses, the general mission people. So I have to get in the line right now. So I beat those people in. Greetings, recruits. Welcome to my home. I am Crow. Master Villain, Scorch of Humanity. So, you want to be with me? 
The training will begin soon, but be warned, danger works. Okay guys, I just got out of Despicable Me Minion Mayhem. It is now 9.22. We're gonna make our way over to Rip Ride Rocket, the third most popular ride as far as wait times go. Um, but I think what I would do, now that I've done it, I may reverse those first two. If I were you, I would probably do Despicable Me first, then go over to Gringotts, and then make your way back over here to Rip Ride Rocket. Now that I've done it, I think that is probably the better way to do it. Rip Ride Rocket is only a 10 minute wait for standby, five minutes for single riders. Gotta get a locker, let's go on this ride right now. Okay guys, we just got off of Rip Ride Rocket. I'm gonna go over here to the kiosk and see if I can get a little snippet of the video that was you know, recorded while I was riding it. Let's see if we can do that. Woo. Okay guys, Rip Ride Rocket is done. What is it, like 9.45 right now. So that's been 90 minutes. So at its worst, those three rides would take about 300 minutes. I did it in 90 because of early park admission. I need a little five minute break though. I'm feeling a little ill. I, you know, I did Despicable Me, then right onto Rip Ride Rocket. And Rip Ride Rocket, the harness, the way they protect you, is a, like a lap bar, it comes over your tummy. Unlike like the Hulk where the harness goes over your shoulders, the one with the tummy bothers me. There's so much pressure put down on my stomach that's pushing in. That makes me more ill than like the ride. So I'm gonna need a little five minute break. But like I said earlier, I think the better order would be do Despicable Me first, then go do Gringotts, then come back over here uh, for Rip Ride Rocket. If you get here between eight and 8.15, those three rides should put you at about like nine o'clock getting onto Rip Ride Rocket right before the masses are let into the park. Okay guys, I have recovered from my first three rides. We're gonna make our way over to the Mummy, which has an average peak time. The longest average time is gonna be like 60 minutes for the Mummy. If you come here to the Mummy and it's 60 minutes, that's a bad time. That's a peak time. But we're gonna come over here. We're gonna do this one, see how long it takes. Like I said, we should be stepping into the queue around 9.55. And the standby wait for the mummy, 30 minutes. Let's go grab a locker and hop on the ride. If it was just me, if I wasn't doing this video, I would get on single riders. I wouldn't do like a 40 minute wait or a 30 minute wait for the mummy. This is for video purposes only. I'm doing it for you to get an accurate feel for what it's like to uh, attack these rides in the best order, like for a family of four. You know, I don't want to keep harping on the fact that I went to uh, Gringotts first. These are my original notes that were in my back pocket that told me I should have gone on Minion Mayhem first. But for some reason, I decided to deviate from my previous research notes. Also a deviation is I'm switching Revenge of the Mummy and the Transformers. So as you can see by my notes, the research I did before I came here and didn't pay attention to that closely when I, once I got here, um, it, what I'm doing here is kind of a combination of the average peak wait times with a path around the park. That's why I like I didn't place Transformers ahead of the Mummy is because the path I was going to take was going to go Mummy, Transformers, and then Transformers would lead me easier to the Simpsons than leaving uh, from the Mummy to go to the Simpsons. So a combination of peak wait times and a kind of a a smoother path around the park I would say well how about that mummy ride I think you know what no I know that is my favorite ride in this park the mummy second I would say would have to be escape from Gringotts the mummy number one in my heart and if you didn't know there are a couple of homages to King Kong in like that fire room when you before you the ride really gets going where those little mummies pop up um, because King Kong confrontation used to be housed in this building so they paid a little homage to Kong himself there's a golden statue of a gorilla and then also on one other side there is a like a big banana okay so we're over here by the Transformers um, it's now like 1025 the mummy didn't take as long as posted so that was a bonus but we're over here and the wait time is 40 minutes for standby 
This is really killing me being a family of four today. Normally I would single rider all of this and it'd be a much greater savings, but I want to give you guys a true sense of what it's like to be here to try to do these rides in the best order. That means I need to go wait in this 40 minute standby. See ya. There's Optimus Prime. There's the back of the line. That's where I'm heading, apparently. Well done, Freedom Fighters. Way to improvise, team. Thanks for being the challenge. Let's head on back to base. Now is as good a time as any to remind you I am going to do a versus Spider Man versus Welcome, Transformers. Don't interrupt me, Optimus. We will do a poll, Spider-Man versus Transformers, and let you guys have a voice in this competition. My name is Optimus Prime. I am an autonomous robotic organism from the planet Cybertron. So walking into Springfield, it's 11-11, so let's all make a wish. Always make a wish on 11-11. So things are actually kind of working out how I thought it would. I thought we could actually get these top six busy rides done by lunch. And so we'll do this Simpsons ride and maybe we'll see if we can squeeze in men in black and then we'll hit up lunch and then I'll tell you about the second half of the day. The wait time for the Simpsons, 20 minutes, not too bad considering we are now in the 11 o'clock hour, meaning the park has been open for over a couple hours now. Okay, so we are now done with The Simpsons. It is 11.42, and like the wait time for Men in Black is 15 minutes, so I think we'll do that first, and then we'll head over to lunch. And what do you know, the app was right, 15 minutes. It's not bad, but it is killing me that I'm not doing single rider today. 502,000, actually my new record. Oh, today's a good day. And now, let's go grab some lunch. Making my way over for a lunch, what happened to the Duff Man? The Duff Man is gone. With the Duff Man gone, I guess Sleazy here is gonna be my partner for this segment. If you're liking the video so far, give it a thumbs up. This will let me know if I should do an IOA version of this. I mean, it's in my plans. I'm probably gonna do it anyway, but please, give me a thumbs up. So I was gonna eat over here in The Simpsons. I was gonna get that heat lamp hot dog. I can't pull the trigger on that just yet. I'm going over to one of my favorite spots, Louie's Pizza. Two roads diverge in a yellow woods, and I, I took the one less traveled. That's right, I'm gonna take the less traveled road over to Louis today. I love this little path over here by the fountain show. A little more elbow room, not so crowded. I'm always looking for those less crowded spots. So if you're ever in the park, and you know I'm in the park, and you're looking for me, a good spot would be around Louis between like 11 and 12, Usually around that time frame, I like to hit up Louis. However, because of the nature of today's video, I am running a little late. It is slightly after 12 and I'm starving. Louis is my pizza and right over here, that little area, that's where I like to eat. So with the soda and my discount, $12.83. Okay guys, now that we are done with our lunch, let me break it down for you what we've done so far today. Before lunch, we did the six most popular, most busiest rides at Universal, all before lunch. Plus, we actually did Men in Black as well, so seven very popular rides, busy rides, all before lunch. Now that it's afternoon, it's after lunch, there is no strategy that is gonna help us right now. But I do have some advice. Two things I would do at this point, afternoon, after lunch, go get a virtual line ticket for Jimmy Fallon Race Through New York, and a virtual line ticket for the Fast and the Furious. From there, all we can do is refer to the Universal Studios app, find the rides we didn't do in the morning, ride those according to the shortest wait time on the app. Now remember, we've already done the ones that are the busiest, so our wait times won't be too bad. For example, Shrek 4D is now a 40 minute wait. But that is half the wait time of Binion Mayhem right now, which is up to 80. And ET is a 30 minute wait. So while I was on the app, I was looking at some rides we've already done. And the Mummy is up to 60 minutes and Rip Ride Rocket 75 minutes. And I already showed you Minions was 80 minutes. 
So a lot of these rides that we did early in the morning have already reached like their average peak high time, right? The longest wait times. So good thing we hit those up first thing. Now to be honest, I think the best thing you could do as far as getting in the most rides, the best ride strategy, get the express pass. And I think the prices range between like 80 and $140 depending on what level express pass you get. Now here's the thing. If you're going to stay at one of the three big hotels, the fancy ones, that's going to be the Hard Rock, that's going to be Portofino Bay, and that will be like the Royal uh, Pacific, or the Royal Pacifica, whichever. Um, those come with free express passes. So you might want to do a little research, might want to do a little analysis. If you're going to stay at an on-site hotel anyway for Universal, you may want to look at, oh, and you're going to buy like express passes. You, it might be better to get the fancy hotel that gets the free express passes versus paying for the hotel and paying for the express pass. That's going to be math you're going to have to do on your own because that's going to vary uh, throughout the year as far as when you're staying in the hotel, the hotel cost. So a little homework assignment for you if you're going to come here and you're considering express passes, which makes the day so much better. The other thing I would have to say is that after lunch, that's a good time to hit up the shows, like maybe Marilyn, the Blues Brothers, the horror makeup show, stuff like that. The Blues Brothers is happening right now. Let's go check them out. So one final piece of advice, and this is for you guys who are not staying on property. You're staying off property, another hotel chain, not a universal hotel, and you don't have an annual pass. You don't have an annual pass that lets you in uh, for early park admission, or you're not staying at a hotel for early park admission, I still advise you to get here early and scan in your ticket. You don't have to wait outside the gates. They will scan you in. They will just hold you in the area by like the Today Cafe. So as soon as the park opens at nine, you can go right in. And in that case, my advice would be do uh, Minion Mayhem first, then Red Ride Rocket, and then start working your way towards Gringotts, The Mummy, Transformers, Gringotts. If you're going to be stuck in a line, Gringotts is the best one. It is one of the best queues in all of theme parks. You know, Disney, Universal, wherever. It's one of the best ones. So if you're going to be stuck in line, that is the one to be stuck in line at. And with all of that being said, don't miss the magic, don't, don't miss, miss the fun. fun. Don't miss the magic, don't miss the fun. Thanks for watching Rick Flicks. Now it's time to relax. I'd like to take a moment to thank those viewers who have donated to my coffee page and bought me a cup of coffee recently. First up, from Down Under, Australia, Lily and J Dog. Thanks for supporting the channel. Next up, we have Anthony. Let's keep that trip alive, Anthony. And now, a thank you to Robert and Gabby. Not too far away in Miami. Thank you so much. Here's a big coconut smile to Angel. Thanks for that big coffee donation, Angel. And lastly for today, Kai. Thanks for supporting the channel, Kai.